Hello and welcome to Thursday, everybody. I uh, I left Paul's comment on the screen here because hell is apt for the week of Halloween. This is the last Thursday show of October, and thankfully we have one of my favorites, Mr. KB Loves Movies. KB, thank Hello, you for stepping God. in at the last moment. Not, not many people know this. Uh, so I had somebody cancel, and, and you were wonderful to step in. And we even have a topic and everything ready to go. <laughs> Two, oh, man. Two to pull from. <laughs> this is true. This is true. Uh, thanks for doing this. Thanks for coming back. You you are always a, a wonderful source of conversation, and I'm just grateful to know you. Thank you, man. Um, needless to say, I'm always here for you. Um, it was fun to make the video for you last night. For those yep. of you that do not know, this man got inducted to our little physical media collector hall of fame. Well-deserved, well-deserved, and I was honored to do a video telling him how much I love his collection. <laughs> it's so funny. It, it just came out naturally. It was like, oh, you know, <laughs> got to know you guys, and I love you. I mean, love our friendship, man. <laughs> <laughs> it was wonderful. Uh, yeah, Bob's Blu-rays channel put on the Hall of Fame induction last night, and obviously it's not like there's a, an actual trophy somewhere or anything, but it's just a, a way to shine a light on somebody that Bob loves, and it was a lot of fun I, seeing my kids being able to donate videos to Bob and all that was, it was just great. Yeah. Even the and sister-in-law. It, yeah. Yeah. That was, <laughs> that was a surprise for sure. Yeah. Um, hope everybody's doing well in the chat. Uh, there was one that I wanted to highlight real quick because I happen uh, not to be too obvious, but uh, I happen to be working on something right now regarding uh, one of these films listed by Josephine DeMarco, she says, new watches since last, Tales from the Hood from 95, Lake Placid, Alligator, Howling Cure, Svengali, Cube, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. That's a first watch, Invasion of the Body Snatchers? Wow. That's a good week, man. Yeah. Some that's a hell of a week. There. Um, I got to ask you, because uh, I one of these in particular, I've already been, I can't say too, too much. Uh, Tales from the Hood. It's yeah. a big deal. Uh, so many people overlook this one. It's easily one of the better horror anthologies with how everything is so well connected. What do you think is the most underrated part of that movie? Clarence William III, man. His whole performance is... If you're old enough, you remember him from Mod Squad. If you're a little younger, you'll know him as Prince's father in Purple Rain. He's done a whole lot of other stuff, but the way he is in Tales from the Hood, I, I think that's memorable. I don't, I don't know. How about you? Uh, there's so much that they just, again, it, it is kind of hard to say what's underrated in that because they just kind of nail everything. Yeah. It, it's one of those horror anthologies where there's not really a, uh, a, a weak segment, which normally there is one that you could point to. Mm -hmm. Even the wraparound on this is just fun. There's nothing that's a weak spot. All of the acting is top notch. The stories are relevant, are poignant, are genuinely scary. And um, the setting is perfect. It's it's just all around a really great horror anthology. I, I think as more and more people get into it, especially physical media collectors, you know, Creep Show recently came out with the 4K. It's October, so people are watching Trick or Treat or Trick or Treat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> or Trick or Treats. Or Trick or Treats. Or hell, uh, Hackoween, <laughs> which we uh, spoke yeah. about last night on my channel. Um, it's, it's just that they're falling more in love with anthologies and that's the one that always goes unmentioned to me. And I wish that more people would talk about it because yeah. it's solid. Like you said, it's, it's very hard to pick apart or like dissect and say, yeah, right there. That's kind of like the weak spot. It's just solid. Thank you. Sort of got a lot of love showing up for KB in the comments. That's for sure. Hey, you all, man, I, I, this is my Thursday nights, man. It's either in the chat you know, making sure Sidna doesn't go off the deep end or, you know, <laughs> that's a hard job by itself, bro. Hard job. I love that he gets the call out. Um, it, it is one thing to, to watch in the chat and another thing to take on this incredible challenge of the entire month of October having 31 conversations. And I got to ask, how the hell is it going? Because every single one I've been able to watch, even just a handful of minutes for you are doing better than ever, man. Well, you know what it is? One, coming off of COVID, I was 
I didn't stream or do a video six or seven weeks. I had long COVID for about five weeks, five and a half weeks. And it's so weird. I mean, you even said it last night. You've missed one Thursday in how many weeks? I'm on 27 months. Yeah. So imagine not being able to do it for six or seven weeks. In a row. Yeah. Yeah. You, you kind of, I don't want to say miss it, but you feel like there's a part of you missing. And it was a passing thought. And I just said, hey, that'd be funny to do 31 conversations in 31 days. <laughs> and my lovely wife is sitting there and she's like, I think you could do that. And, you know, they bring out the doofus in a man, good or bad. And I'm like, yeah, I could do that. It's like all of a sudden I got like this inner Eddie Murphy voice, you know, right. And I'm like, huh, that would be a daunting task. But it was just the fact that I literally had 31 like horror enthusiasts either that I never had on the conversation or I wanted to have back. And I reached out to about close to 50. And it looks like uh, looks like I'm going to sail through the next Tuesday. So kind of dope. It's pretty amazing. You, you've done really, really great. And I have boxes to unpack behind me. <laughs> Sibner says, I was going to let it slide, but you know, KB, I'm always up for friendly debate. Some people, not on this channel, just want praise and no pushback. And I've hey. seen that many times in this hobby. You know where we're from. We, <laughs> we, we know nothing about pushback. It's a uh, way of Speaking life. of that, John says. <laughs> uh, oh, he was making fun of me uh, for a Dodgers game at that. That's, that's what I missed my Thursday for. Mm. That's a good reason. Well, and it wasn't just a Dodgers game. The one of the people from the channel, John DeMarsico, is the freaking he's the the director of the entire Mets broadcast team. Like, I'm not gonna say no to going and hanging out in the broadcast van. Right. So now I've done it twice. <laughs> I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, it was fantastic. Um, handful of things to go through. Obviously, want to talk about some of the things you've been catching up on for horror because that's always an interesting conversation. Um, yeah. one thing I got in for review from MVD is a movie I've never heard of before. This is Lion Girl, and huh. uh, it's got uh Derek Mears, Mr. Jason himself, in this. And uh, I gotta admit, I don't know if I, I can show this here, he's in a pretty crazy looking costume. Oh, wow, looks interesting. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm gonna check it out. They also sent in a, a fixed Toxic Avenger disc. Since uh, mine were some of the ones that were skipping. Uh, the other thing I wanted to really highlight, not many people are showing unboxing of the newest Vinegar Syndrome stuff. And they went mm -hmm. um, old school with some trauma stuff. And so I wanted to show the lenticular for Rabid oh, Grannies. Because wow. some people missed that this was a lenticular slipcover. And oh, it's on both God. sides, of course. And that then the other I thing. Been in a while. This one. Blood Sucking Freaks. Have you ever seen this one? Uh-uh. Oh, so, there it is. This one's this one's wild, uh, yeah. but this they they tried something brand new. And after you take the film out, which is in 4K, which is silly, like I, it's crazy that Blood Sucking Freaks is in 4K. But uh, <laughs> this slipcover is for the first of its kind a magnetic locking, double sided slipcover, reversible slip, reversible slips, Next and uh, level. When you when you reverse it, it's still got the title on that side. You still got the Vinegar Syndrome logo on the other side, and you've got all new art. Hmm. It's an interesting idea. Uh, I I, I don't love it or hate it. It's still new, but uh, it's innovative. It's, it is innovative. It's literally just a flat piece of cardboard with some <laughs> magnets in the in the slip. But uh, it it's works. nice, and and I love the movie. It's a wild, wild movie. Well, think about the first time you had a movie with reversible cover art. Yeah. And how that's true. how freakishly different that was. Yeah. So now this is next level. Yep. And uh obviously um they, they sent Mother's Day for, for this month as well. But the other thing I really want to highlight for anybody that is uh sort of holding out on this title, Mark of the Devil. This is genuinely probably immediately moving up into the top 10 vinegar syndrome movies of all time wow. it is that good of a movie uh for when this was released this has some really great cinematography and this might be off-putting for some people to say this phrase together but the torture scenes are really well done um it's it's not the way you think and it's it is a semi like 
well-made. I won't want to say classy because it's still pretty sleazy, but it's it's actually one of the best films that they've released. Hmm. I I rediscovered this well last weekend that you can be sleazy and good at the same time. Oh, I want to know what what you discovered that with. So my son, also named Ryan, came to visit last weekend, and I think for this assignment of thirty one conversations, I have to watch or rewatch about. I keep saying over 150, but it's been a, about 140 or so movies. And um, and I started in August, so it's okay. But I wanted him to go see Kills of the Flower Moon with me. And there's half a day. <laughs> sitting on the couch, binge watching Gilmore Girls. <laughs> I was like, dude, come on, buddy. Work with me here. Oh, man. Leave Lorelai alone. And I was like, are, do you want to go to the movies? He said, no. I was like, well, I got movies to watch. So I was going to come down to the basement and fire up the big screen. And he's like, no, I'll watch a movie with you. What do you got to watch? I said, well, I got to watch. I got to rewatch Maniac from 1980. Then I have to watch for the first time the remake Ooh. with Elijah Wood. He's like, why not both? So we watched the OG. Then we watched the remake back to back. Now that's sleazy and good. Yeah. The 80s version. Yeah. That's sleazy and good. Yeah, they. I, I'm a fan of both of them for sure. The first one, much sleazier. Uh, the second mm -hmm. one is a really interesting uh, achievement, I guess is a way to put it, because they pull off a lot, and to have it be the person in that movie that is hardly on screen uh, and still sort of amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he does really great with that. In Sully, I would say the re remake is kind of in Sully. Yeah. Uh, definitely on the path of uh, things that we would see some more examples of in, in the near future right after that. Definitely, definitely. So you've been watching a ton. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, I have to ask, Killers of the Flower Moon. I saw it last Sunday as well. Uh, I went with Subaquatic Encounters of the du Dub Kind. This is somebody mm -hmm. that uh, he's been watching the channel and he messaged me. He's like, hey, uh, I, I live in Lee Summit. What's going on? I found your channel. Oh, and, wow. Uh, we went and hung out, went and watched the movie together, and it was uh a, a day like to go and see that long of a movie and to have lunch we were gone for a long time that day I bet. <laughs> so what'd I you think bet. of the movie i haven't seen it yet oh no i thought you could it's you i could have sworn that was like i know day. you would have think i saw it before yeah. it even came out right no yeah. no but i did follow uncle marty today on letterbox he Same. joined <laughs> yeah <laughs> no um I, I i'm trying to get to it this weekend because at this point, I'm kind of like just cruising in for a landing on the on the conversations. A lot right. of pre-recorded stuff. It's just a matter of editing and posting. So I have my evenings. That's why I'm able to be here. I I posted a um, pre-recorded conversation earlier, and that's why I'm able to be here tonight. Otherwise, I'd be competing for attention with you. But um, probably go. I have a wedding on Saturday, so I'll probably go on Sunday and just make it a Sunday afternoon. Uh, Craig says, who's also another Scorsese lover, seen it twice. I'll probably see it again next week, maybe. The second viewing was better than the first, and that's usually a good sign. Wow. Um, I I was definitely impressed. I, I think it's one of, uh, one of, well, it's hard. It's Scorsese. So even saying top yeah, tier, yeah. that's like near impossible. Uh, I, I have it down right now as a four and a half star movie. I could see it going up to a five for me with a rewatch. Um, I will say, and it's so poignant because Robbie Robertson died, but the score in this is amazing. I've already listened to it multiple times since I saw the movie here at home. Um, the other thing, one of his best final acts in a long time. The third act of this movie wow. is astonishing. Haven't and, said that in a while. Yeah, it, it is. It is. It is the best part of the movie. Wow. Well, my my thing about it is that. Well, even before that. So ranking overall, can you call it? Um, it would probably be seven or eight for me. Okay, because the only bigger Scorsese fan that I know than me put it at four, and that just made me even more excited to see it because wow. he's such a hard critic. And I was like, fourth? So you're saying top five, a whole feature film filmography? He's like, yeah. Wow. I, and I want to know where Craig's going to put it, too, because uh, if anybody has not read the zine yet, the physical media advocate, uh, there was, I think it was the second or third issue, Craig wrote this whole piece of 
the b five best Scorsese projects since 2000. And it was fantastic. He said he can't rank it yet. It's far too soon. Okay. Um, okay. I, I get that. Got to live with it. Yeah. And, and I definitely want to see it again to, to be able to do that. But it's, th there's some that I, maybe it's just time, but I, they just, they feel so much more uh, like overpowering, I guess yeah. is a good way to put it. And it's Scorsese. So yeah. they're all great. Nobody's saying that, that, that it's bad or any of the other ones are bad, but um, it's, it's well done and, and you're going to love it. When is it coming out on Apple TV plus? Because it's kind of ironic that they announced raising the prices right before this big movie. Yeah. comes out. Yeah. I, I'd heard 30 days, but then I'd also heard that that might get delayed because it was doing not so as good as they expected. And they wanted it to last longer surprisingly. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll see. And yeah, that, that's the, always the sad thing. It seems like his opening weekends are never, this oh my gosh it made 50 million or, or something immediately it's it sucks it's one of the best directors of all time you, yeah you could argue easily the best i think and, those days are behind us for like dramas and even like longer epic movies like being able to pull first week in box office i mean we live in the horror and superhero children's movies those are the things that rank so maybe uh maybe he should have paid somebody to open a cabbage patch dolls movie at the same time we could have had another barbenheimer there you go there you go i completely agree craig best is always better than popular agreed yeah oppenheimer definitely did great for an epic but oppenheimer also was writing on what is you could easily argue the best marketing yeah potentially ever for film yeah uh, so it, it is October. You're rewatching a ton of stuff. I'm mm -hmm. curious, three or four, some that, uh, either first time watches or things that you're seeing again that have stuck out this month for you. I was just looking at the lesson, trying to think about that. So, um, I'll just put this out there so everybody could just start chatting about it. After 31 years, I finally watched Candyman. <laughs> while, while you're blaming me and roasting me to death i will say best rewatch was the mist with my wife because she had never seen it and did you watch black and white or full color this was before i i didn't have the the blu-ray and the 4k wasn't out yet but that was the best rewatch um also people um pet cemetery the the original one that was oh, interesting. interesting best new watches i would say is ganjam haunted asylum Ooh, yeah yeah any any t i don't i don't really like found footage because nowadays it's more like we're acting like we have cameras and it's found footage right. versus like i think um i went to say hell high hell house that was probably the last the original one was probably the last one that felt immersive and scary yeah. and everything uh poughkeepsie tapes that was great <laughs> um as above so below that was a good rewatch you're in a found um, footage mood this month, man. People kept throwing it at me, but throwing me good ones. That that was a good thing about it. Um, Malignant was a good watch. I had never seen it, even though I have the Blu-ray since day one. Um, yeah, for Kipsy Tapes. Sir of Echoes holds up. I remember the whole Good movie. Time. Yeah, it holds up. Uh, Tucker and Dale, always fun to watch. What's up, Mika? Yeah. Those are the ones, man. And then, of course, number one on my list to watch, once I get it, Terrified. Good choice. You got me wanting to see that. <laughs> like I said, I, we, I, I feel like that we would be good to have the four of us watch it together. Yeah? One night. Oh, my gosh. You're talking about the wives? Got to creep out the wife. Oh, shit. <laughs> that one scene <laughs> at the dinner table is going to make her feel like so skeevy. It's so great. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. Uh, Dude McMahon says, I need to catch up on the conversations. Has your wife changed her mind about The Exorcist? No. No. I even have an opportunity to get the UK 4K with the original Blu rays in it and everything. She doesn't want it in her house. So I got to respect that, just like I don't want hereditary. So no hereditary, no Exorcist. I'll watch it, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah hell house is great 
It's so I, uh, funny. I love that all of this found footage stuff is getting love. And funny enough, just, I think it was last week, I recorded, a, I have like an hour and a half long video about found footage coming up. And all the ones that we named got a lot of talk time. The, th the thing about it for me is if someone could go to and go through all of them and just like, I don't know, just pull out the chaff from the wheat and just give me the good ones. But this whole, like, you got to watch everything to discover what's good. I don't want to go through that because the bad is really bad. But if every once in a while I get a Lake Mungo or get a Hell House, yeah, I'll I'll be into it more. But eh, most of the time it's not worth it. Have I got a, a video coming up for you then? I, I think you'll be pleasantly pleased. Good. Um, some other watches that have come up recently. I really wanted to highlight. Uh, let me bring up my list because I've already forgotten it. Um, <laughs> There was one thing I just watched. Uh, oh, it has been a long time. I don't remember if I discussed this last week. Uh, I rewatched Altered States with my mom and my wife. And man, oh. that's been a long time. That movie is so, so good. Ken Russell is just a wild filmmaker. I haven't seen that in so long, but you're so right. It's wow. Yeah, that's that's one I haven't checked out in a while. Yeah, uh, some of the some of the better acting in, in Ken Russell films, of course, uh, but really, it, this whole movie is William Hurt. And looking at how he was such a young actor at the time, it's crazy that he got this type of performance out of William Hurt. It, it should not exist like this. And, and if nobody is, uh, if anybody out there has never seen Altered States. You should make that a priority. It, it's a mm -hmm. great one. Uh, that's one I'm almost kind of surprised that no boutique, no boutique label has uh, tackled yet. Um, I'm not sure who put that one out, but that thing is amazing. Yeah, that's funny. So what is it, like in DVD hell or whatever? No, it's got a cheap studio blue, but mm -hmm. I, I could see it getting the deluxe treatment and getting all kinds of love and a bunch of uh, educators speaking on... Uh, uh, Ken Russell a lot because obviously we're not going to get a great release of the Devils anytime soon, so mm -hmm. it would be nice to get some of that. Um, gosh, uh, anything else coming up on the channel that you recorded today that you want to hype up at all? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I finally caught up to you after a year. Uh, about a year ago, you were able to interview our local KC filmmaker friend jill six and um after about 18 months caught up and we were able to <laughs> sit down this afternoon and have a very pleasant conversation you know at this point she's a homie every time practically that i go up to screenland armor i see her one time she even invited me out there to watch a short film uh festival so it, it was nice to get my questions that i had for so long i told her i said I went to my niece's graduation in May of 2022, and I was coming up with these questions. So, <laughs> yeah, it's about time. It's about time. So, um, that's probably going to run on Monday if I edit it over. The <laughs> 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 I got time. I got time. So, um, depending on how long Flower Flower Moon goes on, I have time. I'll get it out there on Monday, and I'm supposed to have something on Tuesday for Halloween itself. So. Something to look forward to. Something nightmare related. Amazing. I can't wait to see it. Uh, everybody that has never subscribed to KB, please make sure you click that link in the description. Go subscribe. He does some great stuff. The The conversations he gets with other creators are just really well done, personal, and uh, it's KB. So you know that you're going to love the banter. Come on. You got to love KB. KB <laughs> loves movies. And uh, speaking of banter, after we go over the announcements right now, tonight we are going to be discussing mr rob zombies halloween and halloween 2 and uh, why they exist if they are good uh why you can reassess them why you should reassess them and all those other things that come with it um i foresee this sort of evolving into a full conversation on remakes reboots as you do considering halloween has uh, entered into its fourth chapter at this point and uh, just went through the whole shopping center of uh, being sent around and yeah can't can't wait to see where that lands next and how many people will be pissed off with what they make 
<laughs> you know it's inevitable. <laughs> yep. Uh, Craig says, just saw Kansas native Janelle Monet last week. She's Woo! absolutely amazing. I would love to see her live. Bro, this, um, this last time that she was in Kansas City was when I had COVID. So it was oh. actually the first time, actually second time. She came here once with the Roots and they were at Loose Park performing, which, how do I miss that? Right. That but, sounds amazing by itself. Yeah, just by itself. You know, it doesn't matter where it is. It's in Kansas City and it's Quest Love and Crew. But um, I've taken my daughter, well, this would have been the third time, twice now to see her. And she went this time, but my wife took my ticket. So I, every every time since I've seen her, so every album drop I've seen her. She is amazing. She is electric. Um, she gives a better show because she's home. She got all her, you know, her fans. She she invites her music teacher from middle school to high school up every time. It's it's a beautiful, a beautiful like sense of love and appreciation. She has family all in the crowd, so they're getting hype, and it's a beautiful show. It really is. So yeah, next album, catch her when she's back in town. <laughs> Would love to. Uh, Dell's here. What's going on, Dell? Uh, Brother Dell. This is a perfect time to shout out uh, for everybody planning. Dale will be on the channel on Reconnected in three weeks. Cannot wait to have him on. Yes, sir. Uh, I feel like I scheduled that like two and a half months ago, and it's still not here, Dale. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to have that conversation with you. I hope you're doing well. He's just uh, waiting. <laughs> <laughs> just sitting there. Hmm. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Craig also says, if you have a chance, do not miss her best live performer since Prince. Damn. Yeah. And once again, that uh, she's a protege of him. I mean, so you definitely see the influences. You see the James Brown influences. It's all there. It's all there. Uh, I know you're like, I miss it. There's, oh, and there's been so many times this time. I can't, I can't it's when it's when I had my peak busyness right then when I had like seven things do while you had COVID. But mm -hmm. uh I yeah, I can't wait. Oh man, that that was a lot for next week. And now we get to follow that up with a discussion on Rob Zombie's Halloween and Halloween too. <laughs> All right, my yeah. friend. So first let's go through uh your history. With the original Halloween, we haven't spent much time on this before. What, what is your history like with that title? So, I had to wait until the network television premiere to see Halloween. And it was an epic night because NBC was showing not only that, but if you stayed up past the news on Friday night videos, um, <laughs> how did the ghetto boy say it? this year Halloween fell on a weekend? That was it. <laughs> that was it. Um, yeah, if you stayed up late enough, Friday Night Videos also had the network TV premiere of Michael Jackson's Thriller. So it was oh, a damn. big, spooky night. And that's awesome. Of course, they took out all the violence from 78 Halloween, but just the the presence of the shape and, you know, Carpenter's score, those keys, you know, so haunting and everything, especially when he plays the chase. If you if you know the score, you know the music I'm talking about, and um, yeah, just into it from the beginning, and I still had to wait years later to see two, and then I was among the disappointed when three came out. <laughs> I I think I watch it now, and I just put on you know virtual horse blinders and say this is not a Halloween movie. Tom Atkins is a great dick slinger. This is not a Halloween movie. <laughs> <laughs> He is that the fog goes on and on. I think it was in his contract, like had to be in this one. Okay, I'm in. <laughs> had to be. So yeah, I, I think um each each one I had like a my god. <laughs> I had like a different like initial experience with them. Once again, the making of Michael Jackson's thriller was when I first saw Nightmare on Elm Street. And then it was like summer camp that I saw uh, Friday the 13th part two and then the following night part one. Bass Interesting. Ackwards. Bass Ackwards. It's high, difficult, high especially when teenagers. part two starts with the end of part one. Yeah. High and drunk teenagers that should be watching little kids like me, but they're in the basement <laughs> watching uh, 
35 millimeter rolls of Friday the 13th. But yes, that was my intro to Michael Myers and the Babysitter Murderers. This is a, a very appropriate week to be discussing this because I believe it was just two days ago was the 45th anniversary of the first release of Halloween. And this month is, I believe, uh, the 28 year anniversary, the first time I was able to watch it. And uh, my my first experience was sitting on a really raggedy couch in a cheap, nasty house in Barstow, California. <laughs> and uh, my parents, uh, my dad and my stepmom, uh, they said, you think you're ready for Halloween? Fine, we'll watch it. And uh, they they made fun of me for years because uh, they, I don't remember this, but they say that I spent the entire night, like my legs and arms fully out extended, just stiff as a board, scared to death, don't know why. Uh, but then afterwards, my dad bet me, he said, I'll, I'll give you $5. All you got to do is run and touch the back fence. And the way our house was set up, it was a, a disconnected garage. So we had, if you left through the, <laughs> if you left through the kitchen, you couldn't see the back fence. You would have to run around the garage. And then there's like a small backyard and then a fence. And we lived on an alley. So there was random oh, people walking God. over there sometimes. Yeah. yeah, yeah and yeah. I, all of that was just, you can't see me. We've had homeless people in the alley before. Why would I ever do that for $5 as an eight year old? And I said, hell no, I'm going to bed. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that was that was my first Halloween. And I, I've i been enthralled ever since. Uh, I will admit readily, I do not love all of the Halloween sequels, like a lot of people. Um, I have that, in, little love for 4, 5, 6. Like, they just lost me with that whole timeline. Yeah, I, I get it. Um, I, I, I would probably piss a lot of people off in saying, I think... I think Resurrection and 4 and 5 are a bigger slap in the face than either of the Rob Zombie Halloween films. I I could see your point in that because when it comes to ranking, I mean, they're like stacked right next to each other. Yeah. So it's like, for me at least, the zombie films and then like 5 and 6, especially right there. Okay, that's funny read that please ronnie says my neighbor has a cutout of michael myers in their window right now kind of creepy to walk past in the dark <laughs> okay just reading that i don't know if you saw my eyes open wide but <laughs> talking about the first time seeing halloween i of course i have a deep voice but the other side of that before puberty screamed like a little girl Sick. In that scene where Jamie Lee's right there in the hallway and the alcove behind is dark, and then all of a sudden you see Michael come to the front, screamed like, like a high-pitched hyena scream when that happened. Because nobody, my, my friends were young. They didn't see it, you know, with 12, 13, whatever. And when that happened, oh, Yes. So just reading that line, just kind of, hmm. Well, speaking so, of that scene, have you watched the uh, 4K yet that Scream Factory did for the first one? Yeah. So that scene, uh, a lot of people point to as it, in a sense, ruining the release of Halloween because they remember the fuzzy TV or VHS version where he is more terrifying because it's it takes a while for a while. you to see him on yeah. the 4K. The moment they start the scene, scene, you can see them immediately. <laughs> and obviously, th that was kind of what it was meant to be, that he's yeah. always there hovering, but it just doesn't have that nostalgic feel for a lot of people. At this point, I've lived with it all these years, so it's like, ah, oh, this scene, here we go. Yeah. But, yeah, I um, seen it like on VHS, DVD, even go on YouTube right now and just look for audience reactions to 78 Halloween because they show that scene. They show that scene or depending on the video, they show the end where Loomis looks out. But um, yeah, the grain definitely helped <laughs> in that situation. <laughs> I met some comments here. What were they saying? Uh, Halloween is okay, but it's no memoirs of an invisible man and I'm not being sarcastic. <laughs> 
Um, I don't, I don't love that movie. Uh, he says memoirs of an invisible man is my aliens three. You're not convincing me. I thought Sibner said something about, um, not understanding the hate for, yes. Uh, I've never understood the hate for zombies. Halloween. I get not wanting to know what makes the villain a villain. That's even though we see his childhood, we don't actually know why he's so impervious. That's my whole thing. Um, the scenario I always think of is there's someone running toward you. They're they're holding a knife and they have a crazy look in their eye. At that point or any point afterwards, do you need to know what their childhood was like? Are you interested? Of course not. Evil is evil. Bad is bad. It's coming at you. It wants to kill you. That's all it is. It's a killing machine. It's the T-1000. Right. At that point, who cares? And I think the thing that keeps the mystery of our villains alive is not knowing too much of the backstory. Like we, we had to wait till uh, Freddy's nightmares, the TV show first episode to get the true background of how <laughs> Freddy became Freddy. And even at that point I was ready, but I don't think I'm ever ready for, um, for Michael. I, I think it was, I just rewatched Halloween two recently. And I think Loomis has a line saying that he's evil, he's a spirit, whatever. And now you're telling me that, you know, he used to kill little animals when he was a kid. It takes away from that, dare I say it, mystery. Yeah, but, and even so, uh, even the first Halloween, he calls him the boogeyman. So mm -hmm. there, there's a lot that obviously that that unknown factor is more is more terrifying. And honestly, that's a big aspect through horror movies because we mm -hmm. always see... Uh, these situations where what you don't see on screen can sometimes be much more terrifying than what you do see. So yeah. I get that aspect. And uh, I will happily say, especially the first film, it is not a masterpiece. Um, I, I get that a lot of people were upset that he remade Halloween, but I, I, I'm not upset about that. I, I do wish he had been given mm -hmm. Texas Chainsaw Massacre instead yeah. of Halloween. It would have been a... That would have been more fun, I think. My my whole thing with it is we've already explored different timelines. If if any of you have seen the meme going around with the girl who gets a boyfriend to watch all the Halloween movies and she's trying to explain the different timelines to him. So no, that last movie that we watched had nothing to do with any of the other movies. This next one starts a whole new timeline <laughs> and it has nothing to do with the first three movies. But I think you're going to like it. Yeah. And he's like, okay. You know, so I we've been down the road at different timelines. That doesn't take away from it. I, I just think he, I said this the other night, he is a great visionary. And anything I've seen him do, great visionary. The execution just it leaves a lot to be desired for me. Right. And Antonio here says, uh, Zombies is great while it's trying to do its own thing. What brings it down is when he tries to mimic the beats of the OG. In my opinion, he fails in that regard. And the sad part, I, like, I agree with this whole comment. The sad part is all of those beats of the original that he was trying to mimic, I guarantee you the studio had requirements. You can remake yeah. this, but you have to hit these story beats no matter yeah. what. Yeah. Um, and that's because it's, uh, you know, Carpenter also got a writing credit on this. So it's meant to be... Uh, not just uh, the characters, but it's the same sort of uh, beginning, middle, end. And we got to end up here because, hey, if this does amazing, we'll do a sequel, of course. But mm -hmm. um, er everything that happens in this, it there are certain scenes that hit so well because of his abrasiveness. And then there are other scenes that hit so poorly because of his abrasiveness. Yeah. And yeah. all of the dialogue is bad. Zombie needs a lot of help with dialogue, of course. But... This movie is not one that people should just be immediately thinking goes to the bottom of the barrel. This is a better film than Resurrection. I was just about to say that. Resurrection. This is, mm. uh, a, a lot of people, they rank the Halloween films primarily based on nostalgia. And I get you don't have a lot of time with these yet. But you got to throw that aside when you're looking at the actual film itself here. It's a yeah. completely different thing to tackle. Okay. So with that said... And I don't know if Dell is still in the chat. It's kind of late for him. He has school tomorrow. But he well, loves... he's here and he says collection. Rob Zombie's Halloween is a masterpiece. He loves too. And I've yet to get him to explain to me how. How on God's green earth. That is his number one overall in the entire franchise. 
So let's get into it because it's top three for me. Um, one though, <laughs> one. Not H two O, not OG. <laughs> one. The first thing I got to say is he doesn't it do has drugs. To be, he doesn't do drugs. I've never done drugs either. It has to be the director's cut. That's the first thing. That makes it a better film. Uh, hmm. The other thing is you got to look at it as a sleazy art house film. And the moment you do that and you realize that it's somebody's vision of something that means more and has more behind it, yes, the, the white horse might be off-putting to somebody that's never seen it and is watching this primarily as a fan of the Halloween franchise. Mm -hmm. It's not great. But if you come into this and going, I'm seeing a sleazy art house movie, mm -hmm. it's a completely different tone. You know that horse hasn't been seen since that extended cut of Blade Runner, right? <laughs> it was the same misunderstood horse we're like we didn't get it then we don't get it now what the hell <laughs> good 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 point it's lived a long life but the whole thing honestly and maybe that's it one i've only seen a theatrical so mm. that's one two and i i was joking with this term before but in this case it truly applies it plays like a fever dream for the most part outside of the kills and the half attempted plot okay dell ryan i will watch the director's cut and give it another evaluation because i did promise you i would do a rewatch and i couldn't bring myself to it <laughs> not with 140 movies since august going um sibner wow we i think you just want to fight Honestly, Evener says, I think Zombies Halloween is far better than H2O Resurrection and the first two David Gordon Green requels. I that would agree on Resurrection. I would say it's up there with H2O because I got, I got a lot of nostalgia. I love H2O. But uh, Halloween 2018, I think, is an incredible movie. Halloween 2018, The Force Awakens? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's honestly where my collection stops i i don't have kills i don't have ends but i said this um earlier in the week i had uh this guy wes from the whatnot auction site twice love 22 big halloween fan and i said that um <laughs> the the thing about that one is that it just anyway we'll we'll go on we'll go on what is it saying? Let's get it right. Bill says, let's get it right. I do not like Zombies Part 2. It's terrible. Zombies Part 1 is my favorite. Okay. Okay. But he likes two directors cut. I I think he's saying he only likes Part 1, and it's the director's cut, not Part 2 at all. Yeah. Um, Two just plays like a fever dream, man. Like, I should be on LSD, and I might get everything outside of the kills. Once again, weak plot, weak writing. But then, what the hell, man? Sherry and the horse, and I'm I'm sober. I'm cognizant of what's going on, and I, I don't get what's going on. <laughs> Sleazy art house, and when you watch it with that mindset, I think the emotional beats actually hit harder in Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 than in mm -hmm. most of the other franchise yeah. films, period. So what you're saying is this could be seen as a second standalone in the franchise besides Season of the Witch? Uh, theoretically, yes, because I, I think you, um, I, I think you kind of have to throw away the first one if you're going to look at it like that. And mm -hmm. that's okay. You already know the backstory of, of Michael. We, we don't need any of that crap. So, um, yeah, the, the, the director's cut of Halloween two has a lot to love. Hmm. Okay. I and will now, give it a chance. Dell coming with the, the strong words. I like director's cut of one. I don't like anything <laughs> about two. Sorry, Ryan. <laughs> Get it right. Get it right. <laughs> oh, oh, man. man. It's, I, I know people are very nostalgic about it. Very, But when, when people come at me like that, I always say, so which timeline are you nostalgic about? Because one goes with so many different things. Even goes with 2018 and, you know, the DGG requels and everything. But so many different timelines. You can't tell me you love all of them. And if it's some, there's going to be some you don't love. So, yeah, it's 
that's why this and this is probably a hot take and i think you kind of alluded to this as well just a few minutes ago i don't love this franchise uh i mm-hmm. think there's a lot to hate in this franchise actually um and, and uh, to be quite honest none of the slasher franchises are super strong all the way through like the main four yeah um they all have their their major duds uh i i will say that david gordon greens i i feel like over time people are going to come back to love those a lot more than they think they did hmm. a lot more that well, that I first think... movie go ahead no i was just going to say i think as time goes on more people will discover that in the same vein as 78 and be like well i kind of dug how innovative this one was in reef you know referring to the rob zombie cuts instead of you know if you don't have nostalgia for a certain movie it, it has to be really really good for you to latch on and say this is an excellent movie so you might get your classics whatever it is you know your exorcist there's people with the 4k coming out now seeing the exorcist for the first time or or jaws or shining or whatever the case may be and those are easy to latch on to. You see the excellence in it. But when you have things that are more nostalgia than excellence, it's it's very easy for the next generation or two generations down, whatever follows Z, and be like, well, I, I kind of like this one. This one was kind of funky compared to this one that just played like an old movie. So, yeah, I think you're going to get a lot of that in the future. It's already starting. This is true. And, uh, you know, so many people are just against certain aspects about the David Gordon Green films. The first one, I think that uh, I I feel like they got a lot of the same sentiment of we don't want to see some of the not necessarily backstory, but like we don't want you to flesh out the Michael Myers character at all. And they did a little bit, but that movie's it's overall like it's just classic Halloween. It feels very Halloween. That's that's why I call it the Force Awakens because it's kind of like what they did with that franchise. And it was like, let's see how nostalgic we could get people for the original. The, the second one comes and everybody complains about the dialogue and it's not great, but you got to admit Halloween kills has easily some of the best kills in the entire franchise some of the best kills from the opening the fireman all the way to the yeah best the the playground kills are amazing but i will say this i'll watch a movie straight through the first time and i'm looking for all the cinephile stuff i'm looking for the acting the cinematography um the writing blah 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 and when they started with the mob mentality i turned around to my wife and i'm like what the fuck am i watching (laughs) And then after that, you know, I was like, but we waited. We knew something was happening with the fireman since we saw the trailer. Yep. Because they're like, no, 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 don't go in the house, whatever. So we knew it was going to be something with that. So there was an anticipation. And then I watched it again. I was like, wait a minute. These are really good. (laughs) You don't want to watch a movie just for the carnage. But in this case, yeah, it is. It is a fun movie around that but the writing ugh. and i think they try to recapture some of halloween too it's like let's put yeah. jamie lee in a hospital bed but this time make it different and i think that not not necessarily mimicking the first couple but i think I, i've said it recently on this channel i think the biggest failure with the david gordon green trilogy is they announced it as a trilogy announce a announce a film if it you know, even if you plan a sequel, don't tell anybody. Yeah. That way we know that there's stakes to this. And if somebody survives, look at that. We already filmed a sequel. It releases in two months. Here's a trailer. Everybody loves it. But mm-hmm. the way that you announce the, the trilogy, Halloween 2018 is bleak and it ends in this awful, weird situation because you hear him breathing as the credits go. Mm-hmm. You know there's two more films coming. Yeah. So it, all, you're telling the audience the second film doesn't matter at all he's gonna be in the third doesn't matter they're, yeah. they're gonna have a third halloween movie everybody wants to be lord of the rings movie. man it ain't the same <laughs> it is not the same and what if it did terribly at the box office right your your expectations for three just went way way down so 
So then Halloween ends comes and everybody hates it because of this Corey storyline, which Corey story. I I get for sure, but again, it's a, just a different timeline. I mean, it, we're in a we're in a franchise that already has four or five whatever different timelines. Uh, Jamie Lee has been in more than half the films. Died uh, at least once. There's so much happening. We have we have storylines of these random ass tattoos that we've never even fleshed out in a way that people can care about, and you're upset about this person named Corey. Now, what I will say, I am very tired of horror relying heavily on processing trauma. We don't need that in every single movie. We have other reasons that we can have horror movies and mm -hmm. ends definitely leans a little too heavily on that, but I don't think it's even half as bad as people make it out to be. And I think the important thing is people watched it expecting a, a full bore Halloween film. Yeah. If you watch it a second time, go into it knowing this is going to be different. It's a much better movie. Yeah. Two things for me with that is that the marketing just made it Laurie versus Michael final yeah. battle. You know, even the way they physical media will tell you collectors, the way they put them back to back kind of thing. And then we didn't get that. We got this other dude. And we got this transfer of evil and all that, which would have been great to set up for whatever comes after Michael. But the other thing is, and I think I've spoken to you, I've definitely spoken about it on my channel, is that I was talking about it after I saw it for the first time. And someone said, well, what if you approach it like you were basically seeing a visual version of her book? Because there's a couple of times in the movie where she just shows up. And it's like, how the hell you get here so fast? Right. Like by the radio station. Like how you get there? Why are you just standing there? Yeah. You're looking like a creep. But the whole thing about it is if you do it like a retelling from the book, you're like, huh, okay, that makes more sense. And having a character like Corey up front kind of establishes like this could go somewhere else. It doesn't, but it could. It gives you that, um, that thing. And the other thing I was going to say is we've been talking all the different conversations this month about how, whereas in the 50s and 60s, you had sci-fi kind of making political statements for what was going on, Red Scare, all that good stuff. Now we have modern day horror movies trying to focus on mental health, grief, trauma. And you're right. Everyone doesn't need to be around that, but I think it's representative of our times the people who are writing these stories and i kind of like when people say i'm tired of sequels and requels and superhero movies when they are starving for originality this is the stuff that comes out not everything's going to be a 24 kind of level movie but those those things come out as an underlying like feel and direction for all of them that's why talk to me is so popular this year is because people can identify with that they could identify with grief. They could identify with trauma. Uh, so I, I think that's what everybody's going for, but not everyone is doing it well. Right. So that, you know, we, we mentioned, or I mentioned at the beginning that we'd probably start talking about the idea of sequels and reboots and remakes and how those come into play. And with this franchise specifically, we have, I mean, first off, we have three films named Halloween dumbest thing in the world that that should not exist right right so stupid uh, but now we've had technically you could kind of argue that there's been at least one remake of halloween and one requel which is almost a remake as well but not really because but anyways but you've got all that in place times have changed so much from 1978 to 2008 or whatever it was when zombies first one came out to 2018 when david gordon greens came out remakes and horror um they are to say they're hit or miss is to be kind uh there there are quite a few that are damn good uh this is probably a good time to list a handful of, of that each of us appreciate i will say texas chainsaw massacre 2003 is one of my favorites the hills have eyes is a masterpiece I think that definitely outclasses the original to me. 
Um, I will say The Crazies is a damn good example of a remake. Very good. And uh, there's probably a couple more, but those are easily my tops. Any that I missed that you want to throw out there? Uh, well, we've established this month it's more of a remix than a remake. Uh, Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead. Yep. Um, I mentioned it earlier. We we spoke about it briefly, but Maniac 2012 uh, with Elijah Wood. I, I, I think everything about that is just, it's, you know, we talk about if you're going to remake a movie, don't make it exactly the same. Yeah, that one got the assignment for sure. Um, you see, the problem is, like you said, hit him, hit or miss. It's the perfect thing because for each one of those, you get a fire starter, or you get something that's lukewarm, like Carrie. So it's it's very hard. And I didn't say that just because the posters there, but um, <laughs> it's more because you spoke about it last night on Hall of Fame. Yeah. Uh-huh. and that's that's where I think I really want to hit this because there are. First off, we, we got to be brutally honest with the fan base. The horror fan base as a whole is entitled beyond belief. Um, everything that people view some of these, they act like they are owed something. And I, I'm not saying that's always off base, but in certain cases, it's not necessarily that way. Uh, mm-hmm. one, one thing that I do want to say is a lot of these modern filmmakers that are uh, like Firestarter, there was a couple situations where the director did not react super positively to some of the crit- criticism, if I remember right. Mm-hmm. Uh, said some things on Twitter, like, mm-hmm. I tried my best or whatever. But the big thing is, you are, you know that you're you're making something that has nostalgia attached to it. And one of the things that you're hoping for is to cash in on people that loved that original thing. Now, if you have a super positive response and people love it, you are going to ride that to the bank and be super thrilled with it. If yep. people are not happy with it, you don't have the right immediately to say, nope, nope. Uh, we're a completely different thing. You just separate it from the original. It's a good movie on its own. Sometimes I think you just have to accept it as, no, nah, they just got love for the original. And whatever you do is going to be terrible. So right. 1960, Psycho. Don't don't remake a classic like that. Don't scene. you have the audacity <laughs> to try to do it shot for shot? Because whatever you do will be different and it will be terrible. The end, period. End of story. Yeah. Now, then we have uh, certain times like Funny Games where the director decides to remake his own. And it works. They're both great. Uh, so I, I understand it. So it, it works. Uh, but in all these situations, the people associated with the film itself need to understand it is going to raise a different level of accountability. Yeah. With the fan base, you also got to give it some grace because it's not necessarily attached to that first film other than a monetary uh, underpinning that the studios are hoping for. Mm -hmm. And that's all it is nowadays because any of these remakes, it's a studio behind it. It's not something that's some indie that's picking this up at all. Yeah. And, you know, I mentioned earlier, speaking to Jill earlier today, and we even mentioned it kind of here, I'd rather get the opinion of a fellow filmmaker another filmmaker about like a remake or whatever than to get an a general populist type of an opinion because you don't understand these people are holding your money yep. in their hands and if they say like you're saying you got to do these beats from the original or you have to pay homage in this way or another i and this is coming from a fredhead I really think the remake of A Nightmare on Elm Street could have been a whole lot better. But I think they were just so tied into the things that they had to mimic from the first movie. Yep. While they were trying to be wildly different and original with it. And I think it just took a movie that had a chance and just made it up. But at the same time, once again, we have young fans. I had a a young lady reached out to me the other day and said that she loved the remake much more than the original. And I wanted to curse her out, but then I <laughs> said, okay, tell me why. <laughs> because, you know, I I can't be a gatekeeper. I can't get defensive. My nostalgia, I can't give that to her and say, here, this is why. You, you didn't, you weren't a thought in your mama's head in 1984. So right. how can I give you that feeling? It's true. And there, 
there are a lot of these remakes that are bad. I, I, neither one of us are saying that none of them are bad. Obviously, for every, uh, you know, for every the thing, there's a Martyrs or Mother's Day mm-hmm. or Stepfather. N- none of them are going to be able to be, uh, you know, completely perfect forever. But the way that we are looking at these is with nostalgia tinted glasses, and yeah. for a lot of people, that changes everything. And when you defend an entire franchise like Halloween based on your views on the first film alone, Mm -hmm. that, I mean, that's one of many timelines. Like nobody had even heard the word thorn yet. And yet you're judging a remake based on just that first film. And it it doesn't make a whole lot of name. Right. He didn't, he was the shape. (laughs) They they spoke about Michael Myers, but no, he was the shape. And the thing that keep coming back to me, especially after Carpenter Fest and all that, of course, a lot of talk about it. And then I ran a video asking people what their favorite Carpenter directed film was. He didn't want all this. Right. <laughs> he wanted he wanted more season of the witch where every movie was different and anthology based and just each movie would just be a different story all around Halloween. That was it. Babysitter murderers. That's it. Even just this week, we got a brand new interview with Carpenter by Mick Garris. And uh, he is exalting uh, John Carpenter the entire time. You're the master of horror. How, How does it feel? And all he says is he just wants to sit on his couch and play video games and doesn't care what anybody thinks. Like, he doesn't want to go down this road and everybody just wants to just live on those legacies. Yeah. Could care less. And and the whole thing is, I I think you see the progression through his movies as him just being a student of film studies and just saying, Hey, this is a great story. I hope you enjoy it. And we latch on to the things that, you know, are cult classics or, you know, once again, nostalgia and then things like In the Mouth of Madness and vampires and his scores. God, why don't people talk about his scores more? Yeah. And it just it it just falls second to these phenomenons that we created. It really that's all it is. It's it's this hype that we created and we hold on to with good reason. But the man could care less about you. And how much you love 78 Halloween. Too true. (laughs) Too true. And the funny thing is there's so much baked into this. Like just the idea of remakes alone pisses people off the moment they hear that word. And it's, it's tough because obviously studios want to make money. And so they're going to remake things that are known IPs, but really the way that we should be viewing remakes is something that had a good idea but didn't work the first time. Mm. And there's so many of these films that were written genuinely, like brilliantly. They just maybe were made too early. They didn't have technology that they could figure out. They didn't have a good budget. Take some of those and develop that into a franchise in 2023. Take something that Kino Lorber is releasing and go, you know what? This was a really smart movie made really poorly. Let's do it the right way. And yeah. 50 years later, put some money behind that. I really wish we could somehow get that done, but the studios will never live for that. I'll append to that and say it's also great to introduce it to new generations, like Invasion of the Body Snatchers, the one that came out in the 50s before my time. Yes. So when I was, there's not that deep nostalgia for it. I liked it, used to watch it on TV. That's about it. So when I finally saw 78, or was that the year? Invasion of Bodies 78? It it showed as a much stronger movie to me because I didn't have that attachment to the first one. Same general concepts, but different enough to be its own movie. Let it need more. What else do I have to say? So I, I think that's where you can introduce it, where as the older movie might be, out of date technologies, you know, a little too archaic for most modern audiences. Right. So then you could say, well, here's this great story. 
brought it up to today's standards with today's actors with today's uh creature effects mm -hmm. with uh up and coming actors not just nimoy but jeff goldblum in, in a super weird uh goldblum character and it I is jeff. <laughs> it's a masterpiece i, I mean yeah. everything about that movie is made so well and especially sutherland like at the height of his Ooh. absolute best and delivering that man that, that movie his name and i just got chills down my legs right <laughs> uh, there's so much that he did just perfectly yeah just but perfectly. think about the people who grew up with that in the 50s it's not as manic as you know right. fans as prince once said fans is short for fanatic um, that's why he had friends, not fans. Um, but imagine the people back then, and then they got to 78, they're in their late thirties, forties or older. And they're, you know, they're getting their old man curmudgeon on. And now here's this fand new fandangle, you know, 78 version of their old movie. They loved as a teenager and took Mary Sue to the drive in to see, they probably had the same reaction. We just got Twitter now. <laughs> this is true <laughs> we got twitter fingers now that's the only difference well uh i, I gotta ask now what what are a couple movies you're dying to see remade hmm that's a good question I'm, my mine are like things that people would be like huh i'd love <laughs> to see a modern version of the wraith i love that movie and I, I think certain concepts from it, including the car, would be really, really nice to see in a modern day example. Keep keep it low on the CGI. Um, that's a good one too. Christine. Absolutely. Yeah. I would like to see, you know, it's a classic, but the writing, yeah, okay. And just imagine that what what would be the the car that they would use? They they wouldn't go back to the fifties, they'd probably Gosh. go back to the eighties. So what would it be like a Grand National, a Trans Am, maybe? T-Bird or something T -Bird. like that. Yeah. I could see a Trans Am. Yeah. And then just play nothing but an 80s soundtrack. Yeah. That'd be dope. <laughs> I'd like that. It, it's hard to say because once again, you're falling into the same thing where it's like people will be gatekeepers. Even now, people, physical media collectors love the 80s movies you know and they'll be gatekeepers right oh great yeah <laughs> pt cruiser <laughs> no <Not> at all <laughs> remake the car yeah there you go i i just saw the trailer for that when i went to see christine they showed it before you know how screenland is with the trailer yeah and yeah just remake the car but then we'll get copycats with people like taking their Teslas and just running people over, you know, self-driving Teslas. <laughs> the car, I don't know, have you ever seen? The car's great. Yeah, yeah. That aim lower, you're funny. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my big one. You're on here. Oh, my wow. big one, I want to see another adaptation. I, I guess it won't really be a remake, just another adaptation. Uh, I'm tired of zombies. I, I've mentioned this so many times this year. I want us to get into another vampire cycle. It's always either va vampires or zombies. Give me another Dracula uh, adaptation. Um, not necessarily a remake of the original, but uh, do something that tells that storyline in an interesting and new way that is actually terrifying. How about a sequel to Last Voyage of Demeter where you see him now in London? Make it good, yeah. Make it better. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm into that. Anything that strikes up uh, more vampire love for sure. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, gosh, there's a few I could easily see. If I'm going cheesy and like what I just said, that was a, an interesting idea done poorly. Um, for ones that everybody, if you collect Vinegar Syndrome, you'd recognize. I love the movie Demon Wind. It's not a good movie. If you took that and remade it today with better, uh, you know, prosthetics and all of that, that movie could be so much better in 2023. I don't know why I just thought of two remakes that I've seen like within the last couple of years and they both have Colin Farrell in it. Bright Night and uh, Total Recall. They're both not terrible. Just more potential. Yeah. More potential. 
new Dracula graphic novel on Kickstarter. Hmm. And then uh, Craig also says, we never got great werewolf and mummy movies. That is for sure. Yeah. yeah. Loki got a few good Invisible Man movies. We were talking about that the other night. Uh, Hollow Man. Yeah. And then uh, the Invisible one with Man. Elizabeth yeah. Moss. Original, but still paid some kind of, you know, there was still some type of nuance to it that remind you of the original with updated technology and uh some incredible scenes i mean i i still think that uh restaurant scene is gonna go oh down as gosh. one of the best kills of the 21st century yep 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 easily easily well uh this has been an astonishing conversation on remakes and we started with rob zombie we i think we spent more time on david gordon green and uh, now we're here <laughs> He's more guilty. <laughs> yeah. I think most people would agree nowadays. Um, well, anything else on remakes you want to throw out there? Should we call it a night, my friend? Um, be original. That's my final words on it. Be original. Yeah. So we nice. don't have to be fake ass gatekeepers about stuff that we used to love. <laughs> ain't that the truth uh well I, I mean no better time than the present to save if you love conversations like this and you want to have a whole lot more come join the patreon come have discussions like this every single day in the discord uh we we had a lot of discourse even today appreciate you all and uh next thursday gonna be a good night we got dr dodson coming back lots to talk about kb you're amazing for stepping in and doing this last minute thanks again for all of this Anytime, Appreciate my you. friend. Anytime. The moment you see Killers of the Flower Moon, please let me know. we Will do. <laughs> All right, everybody. We'll see you next Thursday. Have a good week. Stay safe. We'll see you next time. Go watch a movie. Thank you for watching The Disconnected. On the way out, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel, that you've liked the video, and that you've copied the link to be able to share with someone else that may appreciate this.